Hi folks, this is Pastor Dave Grisham here with um, For God and Country Ministries. And uh, you can find us on For God and Country David uh, Grisham on YouTube and For God and Country on Facebook. And here's our logo, For God and Country. Uh -huh. And today's video is entitled The Future of Free Speech. Now, if you want to donate to our ministry as we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the United States, uh, you can donate to uh, our cash app, dollar sign for God and Country Dave. For God and Country Dave. And of course, tonight, today's uh, title of our message today is called The Future of Free Speech. Uh, you can see on my high tech graphics board here, my dry erase board, um, that we bring you nothing but the finest in technology on this channel. Um, the the reason I wanted to uh, discuss this today, of course, on this channel we discuss, you know, we we give Bible lessons, we we talk about Jesus Christ, uh, but we also talk about politics. And the reason that we do this is twofold. Number one is because politics uh, definitely has an effect on Christianity in America. It definitely has an effect on Christians. Um, our laws in our nation, uh, the enforcement of our laws, and uh, all this has a great impact on our society at large. And we want these laws that are written, or those, the laws that will be written, to be influenced by Christian principles as outlined in Scripture, okay? Because what a lot of people don't realize is that even an atheist uh, can benefit from Christianity if he lives under laws that are put forth in place by the principles of Christianity. Uh, a lot of people say, well, you shouldn't regulate, um, shouldn't regulate morality. Well, we do regulate morality. We do. We, we put it in our laws. I mean, thou shalt not steal is actually codified into law in the United States. If it wasn't, you'd be upset about it. Uh, even the atheists would be upset if people were stealing their things. People know this is inherently wrong. And so these Christian principles, if they are, if they are put into the laws of our nation, they benefit everyone, even the atheist, even the Buddhist, even the, the Muslim. Christian principles benefit all of society when it's codified into law. I'm not talking about forcing people to practice the Christian faith. I'm not talking about that at all, a state-sponsored sponsored religion. I'm not speaking about that. I'm talking about the principles of Christianity being embedded into our laws. They have been, they are currently, and they will continue to benefit the United States and its people if it continues to be that way. The second reason we talk about politics is because Christianity played a critical role in the foundation of our nation. The Constitution of the United States is based upon the Mayflower Compact, which was a bunch of Christians who got together and came up with this compact as a code for the way they should live and govern themselves, and the Constitution was based directly upon that. So Christianity played a critical role in the foundation of our nation and our laws are based upon the principles of Christianity. This is the number one reason why the United States has been the most prosperous, most powerful nation ever to exist on the face of the planet because we have incorporated Christian principles, the principles of God and his word into our laws more effectively than any other nation in the history of the world. That's why our nation has been so successful. And we would like to keep it that way, okay? We would like to keep it that way. So today's message is entitled, The Future of Free Speech. And I wanna talk about two separate things that are going on in the United States right now. Well, actually one going on in the United States, the other one going on in Canada. Uh, most people are not aware of these two things. Uh, right now, there is a man a pastor who also owns a newspaper in Montana, and his name is J.D. Hall. J.D. Hall, I spoke with him just the other day on the phone, and I've read a number of articles about his struggle up in Montana. 
And what has happened is there is a transgender person, a man who's trying to transgender or transition into a female. Um, he's kind of a gothic kind of guy. Uh, he runs around up in the state capitol up in Montana and tries to harass the Republican lawmakers and he's just kind of a general troublemaker. Well, Mr. Hall wrote an article in his newspaper about him and referred to him as a man. And uh, this is because this is both biologically and spiritually true. Uh, the Bible does not say you can transition from male to female or female to male. And biology generally says that you cannot transition from one gender to another because your genetics determine your gender and your genetics are determined by God. And so you cannot change your gender. There are only two genders, male and female, and those cannot be swapped and they cannot be changed. There are, you can't be turned into a third gender. Um, I don't care what boy George dresses like, he will always be a boy, okay? It doesn't matter um, what you claim to be, what you claim your pronouns are, you can't change reality by changing the language. Even, uh, even Shakespeare recognized that when he said a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. So a man by any other name would still be a man. A woman by any other name would still be a woman. Uh, there's a lot of um, debate going on in our country right now about these transgender so-called men who are transitioning over to women and they're invading women's sports and breaking all their sports records and, and out competing the women. And it's because biologically they're still men. Biologically they are men and they are whipping these women because biologically men are bigger and stronger and faster than women. This is the way God designed us. He designed men for hard physical labor and fighting wars and protecting the family. That's what he designed us to do. And so he equipped us genetically to do a better job of that. Women are designed for something else. They're designed for nurturing children, for giving birth. They're designed for being the gentler side of society. Uh, the Wild West was conquered by men, but it was civilized by women. You know, they would women would come in and, and next thing you know, the men were going, look, we got lots of women and children around here. We need to we need some law and order in this place. See, women have a civilizing effect on men who kind of turn into barbarians if left unchecked. Uh, actually, God is the greatest greatest civilizer of men, but in the physical sense, it's, it's women. The women are great civilizers of men. If America loses its, uh, if women lose their civility, then we're gonna lose our civilization. So this case, uh, this lawsuit that has come about, uh, mis this homosexual, this uh, transgender guy has sued Mr. J.D. Hall uh, in his newspaper, trying to claim that he is being libeled for being referred to as a man because Mr. J.D. Hall has a different viewpoint on what constitutes a man or a woman than this other person does. Now, you may ask yourself, so what? So he's suing Mr. Hall for calling him a man. This lawsuit has not yet gone to trial. Right now, they're, they're having procedural arguments over changes of venue. They may change the venue to a different place. They're trying to decide on what judge is going to hear the case. And so this has not yet reached national attention. So I'm bringing this to you here and uh, Rich Pinkowski of Warriors for Christ, he's gonna be talking about it on his channel as well. And we're trying to bring this to your attention because this case could have national significance. If this case should get into higher courts, if it should end up in the Supreme Court, and if we should lose this case, if indeed Christians can be sued for libel or slander because they refuse to use the chosen pronouns of people who are essentially mentally ill and don't know their own genders and don't recognize the biologic truth of who they really are, 
if the rest of us are trying are going to be forced into saying what to accommodate their delusion, uh, then you're going to ruin free speech in America. It's going to become forced speech. That's why this title, this message is called "The Future of Free Speech." Um, this case that is probably going to go to trial, it's probably going to be over with sometime by the year by the end of 2023. So if it continues to go and it ends up in national prominence, you'll be hearing about it more in the future. Uh, I just wanted to make you aware of this case and uh, kind of what's going on with it. Uh, I discussed some things with Mr. Hall. There's things he could not tell me because his attorneys have had him, you know, kind of clamp down on some things he can't. There's some things he can and cannot say. And so uh, I was not privy to any information that would compromise their case. And even if I was, I would not repeat it here. However, this case has, as I said, significant importance in the arena of free speech because if Christians can be sued for libel or slander because we refuse to address trans transgenders by how they want to be addressed, then free speech is in danger in America. It's in, it's in grave danger. And this is all being brought about by the LGBT community, okay? There is another case also being brought about by the LGBT community in Canada that is definitely a direct threat to free speech and freedom of religion and uh, in, in Canada. And by the way, this, this case with J.D. Hall involves not just freedom of speech, it also involves freedom of religion and freedom of the press. So all three of those freedoms would be in danger if Mr. Hall loses his case in uh, Montana. The case has already been lost, so to speak, in Canada. What am I talking about? I'm talking about a new law that just passed the Canadian legislature, just passed their parliament by both sides uh, of their house, and I guess Mr. Trudeau is going to sign it into law. This new law is very broad. It is so broad, that's where, it, that's where it's going to threaten the rights and the liberties of Christians in Canada. And what this law is, is a prohibition of conversion therapy. Conversion therapy is a term that's used um, in, in a very strict sense in that it is psychological counseling um, done by psychiatrists and psychologists to try to reconvert homosexuals who are not comfortable in their sin and they want to revert back to heterosexuality. They want to go to normal, normal sexuality. They, they can go to conversion therapy where these doctors or these psychologists will try to uh, convince them that, um, that they are indeed straight, that they can go back to being you know, heterosexual and convert them from homosexuality to heterosexuality. The LGBT community hates this because to tolerate it would be tantamount to an admission that homosexuality is a choice and it's not governed by birth or genetics. Even though there is no scientific evidence, there is no scientific proof whatsoever uh, that homosexuality is genetic. The Human Genome Project was completed in 2003, and they had a large press conference at the end of it, hoping they were going to hear about the gay gene, that we're going to find out now the exact genetics behind homosexuality, and they never got it, because the Human Genome Project did not find the gay gene because there is no gay gene. It does not exist. All sin is a choice, homosexuality included. But up in Canada, they want to outlaw anyone who can try to convert homosexuals to being straight. Now, this law is, as I said, is written so broadly that it can be easily interpreted that the Bible now violates the law. The Bible being used to convert people from homosexuality to heterosexuality, essentially by repenting of their sins, giving their life to Christ, and being born again as 
as being determined to be a cure for that sin, which it is, uh, that this can now be subject to criminal penalties up in Canada, which includes up to five years in prison for trying to convert someone from being a homosexual to a heterosexual. Uh, this is bad news for Christians in Canada. And this is, the very, this is the very essence of how persecution goes. And I've explained it on this channel before. I'll explain it again for this video. The way persecution works is the devil turns good for evil and evil for good. It begins with language. It begins with the word. There's a battle between the word of God, okay, and the word of the world. And the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. So essentially the word of the world is the word of the devil. And the devil from the very beginning has been trying to reverse the order of everything that God has ordered. If you look at it, broadly speaking, feminism tries to reverse the order of the man no longer being in charge of the household, but the woman being in charge of the household. That's reversing the order of men and women. That's exactly what transgenderism is trying to do. It's trying to reverse the physical nature of men and women in order to go along with trying to reverse the spiritual nature of men and women. Homosexuality is trying to feminize men and masculinize women by turning women into butch dykes and, and men into... Uh, you know, effeminate homosexual men, you know, effeminate gays. So the, the devil has been trying to switch evil for good and good for evil and trying to turn God's order upside down. Uh, rebellion with children in the family is a refusal to submit to authority in the family, and that's trying to reverse the order of things. Um, environmentalism. Uh, the Bible very clearly states that man dominates the earth and man rules over the environment, okay? God said that man should rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every creeping thing on the earth. So God gave authority of mankind to dominate the earth and be an authority over it. In radical environmentalism is trying to take the environment and give it authority over man. So this is essentially another way of reversing God's order of things. And that's exactly what is going on with transgenderism. It's exactly what's going on with the homosexual movement. So the LGBT community in Canada has managed to shove this law down the throats of Canadian Christians and Canadian Christians are going to be further persecuted because of it, because the nature of persecution is to, once you've got the order of things spiritually reversed and you get the language reversed, then you change the law because you cannot effectively change public law without first changing public attitude. Once you change the culture, then you can change the law and the culture and the law will be, in, will be synchronized as they were before. It used to be our culture was a Christian culture synchronized with the laws of God uh, enshrined in our laws. And so you had the law and you had the culture synchronized together to push God's order on a, on a community or a nation so that we were within God's will and therefore we got blessed, we got prosperity, we had freedom. However, when you reverse this and you take you take the culture and flip it on its head, and then you take the words that you use in your language and flip it on its head to accommodate the change in the culture, then you can effectively change the law to then reflect what the culture wants, and the whole country is upside down, and it's all completely out of order. And then you will no longer have freedom and prosperity. You will have poverty, chaos, and enslavement. That's where it's headed. Canada is no longer a free country. America will soon follow suit if Americans do not wake up. If Americans do not get involved politically and they do not get involved spiritually, then they're going to end up going down the road of Canada or Austria or Australia. In Australia right now, they're putting people in camps 
Why? Because socialists like to put people in camps. It's what they do. The so Union of Soviet Socialist Republic, the USSR, put people in camps. They were called gulags. The National Socialist German Workers' Party, the Nazis, they put people in camps. That was what they did with the Jews and their political enemies. They put people in camps in Cuba. They put them in camps in Venezuela. They put them in camps in China. They put them in camps in North Korea. They're going to be putting them camps in America and Canada if, if America and Canada does not turn back to God. If you don't turn back to the word of God and start restoring the order the, that God has put things in for a society to reasonably function and have order. See, if we have, we can either have relative truth and absolute chaos, or we can have absolute truth and relative order. See, we, although society will never be perfect, a society will be much better if we restore it back to God's order of things. We got to get our culture flipped back around. We got to stop using the words that the enemy demands that we use. We have to reverse the language and we've got to reverse the laws. We need to do this on a spiritual level, a social level, and a legal level. All three things combined. This is an all hands on deck moment, folks, um, for America. This law in Canada, as I said, is so broad and so sweeping that it will easily be used to say that Christians cannot try to convert homosexuals back to being heterosexual. That if you try to tell a homosexual that they can be born again in Jesus Christ and God can make them straight, that that might be punishable by five years imprisonment. This is a direct threat to Christians. Christians in Canada will soon be going to prison for telling homosexuals they can get born again and get saved and be changed. This is essentially the, the core message that we bring with the gospel to every gay pride event that we preach all over the United States. I've preached at dozens of these things over the years. I lost count how many states and how many gay pride events all over the place that I've preached at. And there are men who've done it a lot more than me. We are all in danger of going to prison if we were to do this in Canada now. If we were to go to Canada at this moment and start, now this law is going into effect. If we were going to Canada now and try to tell homosexuals that they can be born again in Christ, get saved, and be changed to heterosexual, then we could end up in prison because this law is so broadly written. It's also so broadly written that if a parent tries to tell their child who claims to be gay that no, they're just wrong, they're mistaken, they need to change their line of thinking, and they're actually straight, they can go to prison for this because this law is so broadly written. Now, the reason I'm bringing up these two cases is because I want to sound the warning bells. I want you to understand, Christians, what you're looking at for the future if things don't change. And the only way they're going to change is if America comes back to God. If America does not repent of its sins, if America does not go back to the principles of Christianity and its laws, and if we do not go back to uh, a society and a culture that respects the word of God and respects the principles of God in scripture, then we are headed for very, very dangerous ground. We're headed for tyranny and poverty. America will lose its freedoms and America will lose its prosperity. You're already seeing it. You look around. You're already seeing what's going on. Did you ever think that you would see 25,000 federal troops in uh, Washington, D.C. with fences around the White House and with razor wire on it and fences around the Capitol building with razor wire? That happened in 2021. A good chunk of 2021, it was exactly like that in Washington, D.C. It's like you walked in there. I was there. I was there on when, when they inaugurated Joe Biden into office. It looked like something out of a third world country. I expected to see tanks rolling down the streets of America. 
It was, it was quite shocking. And I pointed this out whenever I preached the messages, one of the messages I preached there. I said, look around you. If you don't think there's a problem spiritually in America, why do we have all these fences? Why do we have all this razor wire? Why are we having Antifa riots and Black Lives Matter riots in the streets? Why are, are whole blocks of cities being burned down? Why do we have Antifa take over an entire section of, of, um, of a city and call it Chaz or Chop or whatever they called it? They, they call it that because these Antifa idiots, they don't have jobs. They're not educated. They probably can't spell anything over four letters. Believe me, I've met a lot of these people. They can't even, most of the things that come out of their mouth are four-letter words. And they can't say anything above four letters. But in any case, I wanted to put out this warning today so that you'll understand the stakes uh, are high and exactly what's going on. These two cases are critical. Um, it is not, the one in Montana has not reached a national level. We're hoping that it will, so more people will become aware of it. But if, if the homosexual community can sue Christians for libel and slander for not using the proper pronouns, uh, free speech will be dead. Freedom of the press will be dead because you can't say what you want to say. And even in editorials. See, this man writing for this newspaper was writing essentially editorials. He was writing his opinion on things. What, we're not allowed to have opinions contrary to other people's opinions? Um, see, and, and that would, that's threatening freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and freedom of the press. It's threatening all three of those freedoms, all three of them. And up in Canada, they've essentially lost their freedoms. Uh, they're going to have to get that law reversed. Otherwise, Christians are going to end up going to jail for trying to convert homosexuals to Christ to get them to be born again. That is a direct confrontation of our, of our rights. This, as I said earlier, this is how the devil does persecution. He flips around the culture, he flips around the language, and he flips around the laws, and then he uses the law to come after you Christians and says, you're the one doing evil. Once they've redefined evil, now you're evil. And they're going to punish you under the law because you're discriminating. You're homophobic. You're a bigot. You're a slanderer. You're committing libel. See, they're flipping this around, turning it upside down, and then using the hammer of government to persecute you Christians. That's why Jesus said, you will be dragged in front of the synagogues and in front of kings and councils because um, for his namesake, because he, God knows how the devil works. And this is how he's working. You need to be aware of it. You need to be acutely aware of it on every level. You need to not fall prey to it. You need to not comply with it. Do not, do not use pronouns that they choose. You refer to all men as he. You refer to all women as she. All men as him. All women as her. You do not use their pronouns. Do not surrender that ground to them. Do not comply under any circumstances. If you use the wrong pronoun for a so-called transgender person, you are bearing false witness against your neighbor. You are a liar and you are in sin, Christian. So you need to not do that. Do not use their fake pronouns. You use the real ones to tell the truth. You tell them who the gender, the, their gender is determined by God and they have no authority to change it. And you have no authority to speak otherwise, Christians. You need to stand firm, stand strong, fight. Get on your knees and pray. Go out and preach and go out and vote. Call your congressman. Get involved politically. Get involved culturally. Okay, don't just sit in your church and do nothing and think that if you're tithing, you're, you're okay with God because the whole country will fall around you. Then they'll kick down the doors of your sanctuary and drag you out 
or they'll just pass a law that says you can't go to church, you know, because there's some flu bug going around, and you'll dutifully comply. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you today. I hope it's been an encouragement to you to stand strong. And um, until next time, I'm Pastor David Grisham with um, uh, For God and Country. And remember, our donation is dollar sign for God and Country Dave. And this is uh, God and Country, For God and Country Ministries. And uh, we're on YouTube and Facebook. Please, if you're on YouTube, hit the notification bell, hit the subscribe button, and click the like, the thumbs up button for like. So God bless you all. You have a good day.